This is Julian and I'm here in Tel Aviv and what I want to talk about in this video here is a problem that far too many people have when socializing which is running out of things to say. Getting caught up in your head, analyzing, micromanaging, having those awkward little pauses where you just fucking freeze and how to break out of that. Okay, five tips to never ever run out of things to say, five tips to keep a conversation going. Let's do it. Tip number one, don't focus on what you're saying, focus on how you're feeling, okay? Whenever I'm interacting with someone, of course, you know, the conversation has to make sense. You can't just make random noises the entire way through, but it's much more important to tune into how you're feeling, the vibe, if you will, the subcommunication, because that is much more important. And once you realize this, it takes so much pressure off having that perfect conversation, the perfect words, the perfect verbals, and you can just talk and talk, flow and flow forever. We're also surface focused. We think that we're gonna attract people by talking about interesting things. What is something that's interesting? What's interesting? What defines an interesting thing? Something that you like. Good job. In the back. <laughs> okay. No, it's true. It's what you find interesting. If you're interested in something, it becomes interesting. There's no universal rule of what is interesting. There isn't. It's like, oh, I guess the topic of, no, no. Every single topic is boring to someone and every single topic is interesting to someone. Okay, and it really depends how it makes you feel. You could literally be into mathematics and if you go up and talk to someone, you're like, hey, Two plus two, man, best fucking equation, four. <laughs> That'll draw people in, because you're so into it. It's like if a friend comes up to you and they're like, whoa, do you see that movie? You're like, what, what movie? You don't even know what fucking movie. You're like, dude, I just bought new bed sheets. Check this out, bed sheets. It doesn't matter as long as you're into it. So instead of being so concerned about the other person, like, oh, what's an interesting thing to say? What do you find interesting? Even deeper, it's what do you find funny? Okay, you wanna press three buttons, and I talk about this quite a lot. There's three inner buttons, three things that we're all craving, fun, carefree, passion. Whatever you say, try to link it to one of those buttons. If you find it funny, that's good, because then you'll start ah, laughing, generating some th fun, and that's what everyone's missing. You look outside, everyone's just so sad, so fucking sad, so bitter, so down. Um, it's rare you walk in the street and you see someone like, that's like strolling down the street. Everyone's like, no, no, everyone's like this, like. It's crazy, that's what you see. Walking in the street, except with iPhone 3s. Non-stop, okay? Um, it's, it's to the point where you even feel uncomfortable without your phone. If you're standing without a phone, people stare at you, it's like, what the fuck, that person doesn't have a phone? You're like, you feel very naked. Um, so everyone's down, if you just generate some fun, you'll draw people in, because everyone wants to have more fun. Everyone wants to stop caring so much. They want to feel at ease, they want to be more carefree. Everyone gives way too many fucks. Stop giving a fuck, go first, and they'll be drawn to you, because that will transfer onto them. And every time they're around you, they feel a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more at ease. I'm sure you all have friends who give less fucks than you. Right? Or at least one person in your social circle. And when that person is around, god damn, are things more fun and light, right? They're like, oh, I wish that person's there. If that person was here with us, oh my god, we'd be way more relaxed. Generate that yourself. And the third is passion. No one's passionate anymore. Everyone's just, meh, whatever. Be excited about something. What excites you? So in terms of what you're saying, fuck the words. They don't matter. Focus on the vibe, on what it makes you feel. If it's something funny, say it. Whatever it is, it could be like the dumbest joke. You could even find it funny that you're saying something boring. You could talk about the most boring thing in the fucking world. If you find it funny and amusing, it'll become interesting. 
okay? Fun, carefree, passion. If you're too worried about the words, you're screwed, okay? And on top of that, people are looking at the deeper layer. They're not looking at the words you're saying. For you to get to know someone, of course, say 10%, 20% of your attention is on what has been communicated here. But the other 90 to 80% is, how do I feel looking at this person? What's the vibe? It's similar if you're, it's the same as if you're gonna hire someone. Are you gonna hire someone just based on their resume? Like say it's a very, very important task. You're like, I need the best of the best for this. Let's look through some resumes. Oh, him, hired, done. No, you're gonna read through the resumes. Of course, you're gonna be aware of it, but then you're gonna wanna meet the person to get a feel for the person. Is the person grounded? Does he look certain? Does she look certain? What's going on here? The same in any interaction. 10 to 20% is on the words, the rest is, how do I feel? Tip number two, lower the bar for what you have to say. You know, we try so hard to just say the perfect thing, the really cool thing, thinking that will impress people, when in reality, even if you actually do manage to say that really cool thing, the bar's really high and everything you're saying is just fucking perfect, you won't seem that cool. In reality, you will seem very try hard, okay? It's much better to just lower the bar or even better, destroy the bar. Have no bar, have no filters, and just flow. If everything you say is fucking gold, you just look way too try hard. It's, it's like, whoa, this person must really care about my opinion, holy shit. Okay, if you say everything is perfect, it's way too try hard. So lower the bar, okay? And that'll help you feel way more at ease. If your bar is so fucking high, even if you actually manage to say everything that's perfect, like this is good enough, all the rest is not good enough. This is good enough, not good enough. Even if you say it, it looks way too try hard. Lower the bar or ideally get rid of the bar and just let it all out, okay? You all have something to say. There's that little voice yapping about, probably even right now. Let it out. Even when you're, you run out of things to say in a conversation, it's not like your mind goes blank. You're like, I'm present to the moment. I am enlightened now. No, that voice is still going around and around in circles. Unless you come to Transformation Mastery Live, in which case it might go blank. <laughs> okay, um, verbalize it. Okay, lower the fucking bar. Tip number three, enjoy running out of things to say. Now, this can sound confusing because the whole point of this video is to not run out of things to say. But guess what? When you enjoy running out of things to say, there's no longer that worry, that resistance, that dread around it, and you don't run out of things to say. Check it out. I personally love, love, love it when I run out of things to say. Um, you can get better at it, of course, by lowering the bar, but there's still some times where you just kind of blank. You can have some go-tos, okay? Like you can blurt out random words, like whales. What, whales? Like you can just sit, literally say whales. Um, <laughs> or, and this is my favorite, just move your lips and make a sound. <laughs> For real. And words will come out. And, and you'll be surprised by what comes out. And that's the exciting part of an interaction for me. It's like, when I run things to say, I'm like, oh fuck. Let's make sounds and move lips and let's be surprised. And it's literally like, I, I kind of zoom out and I'm watching myself. I'm like, what is he gonna say next? <laughs> like that's when I surprise myself. I'm like, holy shit. And you just move your lips. Babble dick. There's a dick, babble dick. That's me moving my lips, making a sound. Babble dick. Shimmy shoe. What the fuck is shimmy? Babble dick, shimmy shoe. Then the other person's like, what? And now you can laugh and build on that. Babble dick, shimmy shoe. You run out of things to say, babble dick, shimmy shoe. You run out of things to say, whales. You run out of things to say, condoms. You run out of things to say, um, sex. What, what do you say? Sex? And then just keep talking about that. Tip number four, focus on a wide range of topics as opposed to just one topic and going really in depth on it. You know, we try to find that perfect topic to just milk and think, okay, what else can I say about this? What else can I say about it? Oh my God, there's nothing more to say about it. Talk about a lot of things, okay? And guess what? Even if there is no logical connection between those two things, even better. Okay, it makes it interesting. It's unpredictable. It creates an emotional spike. It makes it exciting. Okay, so focus on a wide range versus one thing and just milking it and becoming that one topic person. Talk about a lot of things. Go from this topic to that topic to that topic to that topic. If there's something you really love, then yeah, keep talking about it for a little while, but don't go one way. Like, not, don't be that one topic guy, okay? And uh, we think that if we talk about a lot of topics, there's not much comfort that is built. 
But in reality, it's the opposite. There is a lot of comfort built when you talk about many topics. Why? Because comfort is not in the words. Okay? It's in uh, um, creating a certain vibe of togetherness. How do you create comfort? By going through different environments together. The more environments you go in with someone, the more comfortable you're going to feel, the more trust, the more of a bond there's going to be. You don't even have to talk to that person. Like if I put, say, you and you, like two strangers, and you go do this like obstacle course mission thing, and you're not allowed to talk the entire time, and the mission's like a week, and you're helping each other out and shit, at the end, although you don't know each other's names or anything about each other, you're going to have a certain bond. There's going to be comfort. So the more environments you're in, the more emotions you go through, the more topics you go through, the more comfort, the more togetherness there is. So go through a lot. And the more abrupt the change in topic, the more illogical, the better. Meaning, we all want to string together this perfect interaction, where if we talk about this, then I'll link it to this, because it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, it's actually even better. If you ask someone, so um, are you from uh, Tel Aviv? Oh, cool, what are you for breakfast? That there spikes up the interaction emotionally. Are you from Tel Aviv? What did you eat for breakfast? Is the sky blue? What, what, what? Like, how does this link to that? An emotional spike. So say things out of left field. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, sports, awesome. By the way, are your parents divorced? What? What? <laughs> and it doesn't even have to be extreme or polarizing. Just like, oh, that's awesome. Do you like the color brown? Shit like that. And tip number five, don't take yourself so goddamn seriously. Okay? It's a conversation. It's not a mission where the fate of the world depends on you succeeding at this and doing everything perfectly. It's a fucking conversation. Relax. Laugh at yourself. Enjoy. It's not so serious. It's not a big deal. You're not James Bond saving the world in a fucking interaction. You're just talking to a stranger. Okay? You think people will remember you forever, remember this interaction forever. Um, even if you make a fool of yourself with someone you don't know who you just met, they will forget you very fucking fast, okay? Most people you talk to, you could do the, the dumbest shit. You could like run out of things to say, be like, oh, and just like walk off. Like the weirdest shit, they'll forget you. They might remember you for like a minute. It might turn to friends like, that was weird. Um, anyway, done. You're out of existence. You could come back a week later, hey, do you remember me? Nope. Who are you? Okay, um, it's very, very difficult to make a long-lasting impact on someone. Whether it's positive or negative, it's very difficult. We take ourselves way too seriously. We're in the me world. Everyone's looking at me, all about me. You're sitting here in the crowd. Everyone's looking at me. Okay, maybe they're looking at, at daddy up here, but a little bit at me too. No, everyone's like you in their little world. It's hard to pierce through, so relax. And once more, the more carefree, the better. And um, I mean, you can just test it. There's always some people, and it's usually a different phase you go through, who take themselves very seriously, trying so hard to be cool. And you can just sense the, the stiffness. Like, hey, you know, there might be a few of you in this seminar. Like, you walk in, you're like, OK, let's be cool. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty advanced at this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're very serious, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah that's really good. You're like, just way too seriously, and it's like, okay, I, I mean, yeah, you, you seem like quite confident on the surface, but it's just not a comfortable vibe you want to be around with, okay? Confidence is not maintaining this rigid front. True core confidence is just relaxing and being okay with everything that is you. That's true confidence. That's the vibe you want. You don't want someone coming up to you like super fucking serious. Because it even, it even puts pressure on you. Like, do I have to be serious too? You want someone to just be like, hey, all is good. You're like, oh, thank God I can be me. That's what people want. Go first, give them that. And then laugh at yourself. Even awkward interactions make for great fucking stories. Awkward moments, we hate it. Those are epic stories. Epic stories are either a, a successful story. You're like, yeah, and then this happened, fuck yeah. 
or a really awkward story is just as fun. So put these five tips to use right now, okay? Implement this immediately. And if you wanna go even deeper, because a lot of this has to do with our self-esteem, our image, the front that we put up, and if you want to permanently eliminate this front, let go of it, I created a program called Transformation Mastery that takes you by the hand and teaches you how to do exactly that. Just click the link here below, start your deep transformation, get rid of the fronts, get rid of all the worry. Oh my God, what are people thinking of me? Filtering who you are through this fucking front. Click it and I'll see you on the other side, motherfucker. This is Julian and welcome to Transformation Master. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest epiphanies I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level. Okay, be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after.